We going? There we are. are we All right, going? guys. Uh, Welcome back to the Go Ruck Show. We uh, failed to plan for the most part this week, as always, and have demonstrated that we just can't do anything right without Jason around. Sorry, buddy. Thought you could count on us, but maybe not. So anyway, what we're going to do this week is we've got sort of a bullet list, rapid fire style of some questions that we're going to ask of each other, and you guys can fire some questions into us. But the gist of it is we're going to talk about some of our favorite things. Yeah. Maybe some of our least favorite things. Probably talk more about some of those. Oh, let's try to keep it positive. We're going to stay right. positive. We're going to talk about our favorite things. It's like the Oprah show. You know, like where everyone gets a car or like a bag of makeup or whatever. So we're giving out cars? We're not giving out anything, actually. You we're don't just gonna get talk, a car. We're just going to talk about our, our favorite right. stuff. So Bomber's here, too. Say hi, Bomber. What's up, y'all? Bomber's got the computer up and running, so if you want to send questions, he will take them. We will do our best to address them unless they suck. Um, Jason is... Oh out of town right now trying to lock down sort of the final phase yeah out of town uh, <laughs> way out of town he's, he's many towns over um trying to lock down the final phase of the the whole go ruck shoe project which has been many years in the making they're doing a lot of cool stuff so more on that down the road but we'll try to hold it down this week and uh do something maybe just a little bit different and get into some things that are a little bit more kind of quick hit a lot of times you guys suffer through jason and i pondering and pontificating and like getting into big, long philosophical discussions about if America's getting soft or I mean, you use leadership. the word pontificating, so it gets deep, is what he's saying. Yeah, like, I'm clearly not a guy you want to listen to for any length of time. Um, but this should be fun, so yeah. we will go ahead. We've got a few kind of starter questions on the board. We'll, uh, we'll let them rip, and then sure, we'll start yeah. fielding some from you guys. Does that sound good? Works for me. All right, what's the, uh, what's the first one on the board? My brother's watching. What's up, Dave? It's a proud day for Dave. Oh. Jake, ruck plate bundles are back, homie. I'll put a link up. That's Bomber's favorite beer. That's what his favorite beer is. Ruck plate bundles are back. Oh, favorite beer? Reasonably corrupt from Shreveport, Louisiana. Oh, you want to start there? Favorite beer, is that Bomber. Where going? Okay, no, that was a good answer. Favorite beer? Reasonably corrupt from Great Raft in Shreveport, Louisiana, my hometown. Reasonably corrupt. So, what uh, what kind of beer is that? That's a dark lager, and it's rated eighth in the world. It's delicious nectar, as though Jesus had swooped down to that distillery and stirred on the pie. Okay, we're not supposed to talk religion on the Go Ruck Show, oh, but that's okay. fine. Bomber. First right. question. You who, jumped who, right in. Reasonably next, corrupt, dark politics. lager. Uh, okay, Lee, favorite beer? Coors Light. Really? Yeah. It's. American, it's cold, it's easy to drink, you can get it almost everywhere. No, I don't hear it. So my dad's favorite beer is Coors Light. Yeah. Although he... he and he's a Keystone man also, right? Yeah, so he's he's convinced, and he's probably right about this, that Keystone Light is just, it's just Coors Light packaged in a different can. Yeah. It's just a marketing sort of off-label thing that they do at Coors Brewing Company. He's probably right about that. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. You would probably know better than I would, but... That's, that's his fit. If he's out, like at the bowling alley or at the bar yeah. or whatever, and there's like long necks going around, it's Coors Light. I, I mean, I've been on a Mexican beer. I've been Dos Equis Amber lately. It's been kind of my go-to. And then... Trying, I mean, to, trying to warm us up, you know? Kind of yeah, call, call yeah, in the like, sun in the, the dude, summer. It's been so nice lately. And then I walk outside this morning, 51 degrees. I know. Which oh, is man. still tropical compared to what they're dealing with yeah, up north not, right now. It's not Boston, but, you know, what still is... Still not. No door friendly. So, 70 degrees is door friendly weather for a Jeep. Yeah. So I'll go. Uh, I like beer, and I, you guys maybe have noticed that. I don't mind a lot of variety. I like to try a lot of different stuff. I'm not like a hardcore brand no. guy. Um, I'm going to go Invasion Pale Ale from Cigar City Brewing yeah. in, uh, in Tampa. That's It's my favorite because I like. I, I kind of like IPAs, but I like pale ales better, if that makes any sense. So IPAs tend to be a little bit more bitter, a little bit more hoppy. Right. Um, I like the flavor of it, but I don't like the bitterness or the hoppiness. And Invasion, and so High Lie is kind of the flagship IPA that yeah. Cigar City makes, and it is real good. Ask Mocha Mike about it sometime. Um, but Invasion Pale Ale is like not as, it's not as common. You can get it in Tampa, not as much in other places, but it's like just a little less bitter, a little less hoppy, a little lower alcohol by volume, and it is just... Primo. We have a beer, a beer back home, uh, made by a local brewing company in Oklahoma called Coop. Uh, they make one called an F5, and it's like twelve percent alcohol by volume, and, and so it's called F5, like F5 tornado, right? It's like you have one, you stand up, it's like whoa, changed your life. So I'm glad you mentioned this because I got a text from my dad yesterday. Let me see if I can pull it up. I got a text from my dad last night, and it says, "Have you ever tried one of these?" And I'm like, well, I wonder what this is. So I open the text and there's a photo of a beer can. 
I'll see if I can get up here to the screen so you guys can see it too. Um, there it is. So that, my friends, give apparently... It, give it to the nice camera too. There you go. There, okay, yep. So that, my friends, apparently is called a Natty Daddy. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, right? So this is a 12-ounce beer made, I'm, I'm assuming, by the folks that make Natural Light. You know, all-time favorite. And it is 8% alcohol by volume. And it says it right on the can. <laughs> That's sweet. So, so I respond back and I'm like, he says, have you ever tried one of these? And I'm like, what the hell is that? And, no. he, and he's saying he saw it because he gets his he restocks his Keystone Light at Dollar General. Obviously. Why wouldn't you? And um, and apparently at Dollar General they mm -hmm. also had this. So I guess his buddy bought a twelve pack and gave him like three of them at the house. And I was like, Dad, if you drink all three of those, call me. It's a big <laughs> I want to talk, talk to you if you if you drink through those. I can't imagine it tastes good at at eight percent alcohol by volume. What about natural light? But... Have you heard of the alcoholic water? I have. <laughs> I mean. <sighs> I thought that's I thought that was what Coors Light was. Yeah, me too. And then then you know everything changed. Ah, <laughs> oh, Natty Daddy. So I don't know. He said he was going to try one last night. I don't, Dad. If you're watching, update me. Did you have one or did you have three? I, I really want. Does to your know. dad watch the Garak Show? I don't think so. I think my mom does sometimes. I don't yeah. know. Maybe he does. Anyway, all right. Favorite beer. That was a good one. Uh, Bomber. Have any good ones come in, or should we just keep going down the list? They're being lame. Okay. Favorite war movie. Specifically, war movie. Marine. Full Metal Jacket. I watched it last <laughs> night. Get some, get some, get some. It's great. I am in no way surprised by your selection. I, full Metal Jacket is a great war movie, it by is. the way. It's, it's like fantastic. two movies. Ever, yeah, it is. Kind of two about parts. That? The boot camp part and the Vietnam part. Yeah, you could, you could watch that movie right up to the point where Pyle <laughs> shoots himself on the toilet. If they, yes. if they made it today, <clears throat> Spoilers, they would have made man. it. <laughs> They would have made it two movies, right? Because that's what they do. They split them up. Oh, man. man. We part watched, one, I watched a, a Marvel movie with my kids over the weekend, and it was it was an okay movie, but the whole thing, as it turns out, is just a setup to, like, make another one. What'd you it's watch? Like, you know, look, I, superhero movies are fine. It's not, like, my favorite thing in the world, but I think they're okay. I wish they would just start, they try harder to make one that stands alone and isn't just some setup for the next $100 million box office. Right. I mean, I, whatever. They're in business. I respect their, uh, I respect their deal. Anyway, war, back to war movies. No, wait. Well, what, which Marvel movie did you watch? It was um, Doctor... Strange. Strange. Yeah. That Doctor one was Strange. all right. Yeah, it was, nah. it was okay. Yeah. It was okay. People the new Thor was really Thor. funny. Haven't seen it. The favorite, Ragnarok one? Yeah. Favorite... Can I say Can I say Captain America Civil War is my favorite war movie? If you want. He's uh, a soldier, right? Yeah, he is. Winter Soldier, in fact. Yeah. Do you, do you well, know the only one that can beat Captain America? I don't, I don't like it. Oh, Captain boy. Vietnam. Oh boy. <laughs> Jesus God. Oh, God. I don't even know what am I doing. What am I doing here? Where's Jason? Jason, you come thought, back. You thought this was a good idea. Come this, back, Jason. This is gonna be great. God dang it. <clears throat> Lee, what's your favorite war movie? Let's move on. Alright, um my favorite uh Saving Private Ryan. Ooh. Right. I was gonna go Saving Private Ryan. Kind of a layup. Because mm. it's really good. It's Spielberg, right? Yeah, so that this isn't a movie, but Band of Brothers, the Band of Brothers right. series. Um, it's, it's like amazing. 10 hours long. That came out um, in the fall of 2001. So it was right after 9-11. It was right after I got commissioned as second lieutenant. So I basically learned everything that I knew about being a military officer from Dick Winters. I, I learned what to do right from Dick Winters and what to do wrong from Captain Sobel. Um, and I was like, I don't want to be that guy. I want to be the other guy. So that's like Ross. what I tried to emulate. Um, <laughs> Ross. Yeah. yeah. Ross. Ross from Friends. <laughs> how, do you, how do you get past? He did a nice job because how do you get past Ross from Friends? I mean, that's... He hasn't done a whole lot since friends. then. Rachel, Rachel was just fine. Jennifer Aniston was just fine. David for Schwimmer, years. yeah, he was. See, he had he had outkicked his coverage back in the Friends days. I mean, and that guy was dating Jennifer, Jennifer Aniston. You, you get Jennifer Aniston out the gates, yeah. All right, the answer is Black Hawk Down. Ooh, Black Hawk Down is is in my opinion the best war movie of all time. Super realistic, movie. absolutely. Also came out that same year. I think it came out in 2001, 2002. 2002, it came out. I was a second lieutenant when that movie came out as well, and that was. That was uh, post 9-11, but before the wars in, in Afghanistan and Iraq were really going, before the war in Iraq was going at all. And just watching sort of the, the emotion and the realism of Black Hawk Down and those dudes in the, in the, the, the street fight that was Mogadishu was it, was, it was awesome to see. They did a very nice job of that movie. We know some people that were there. Yeah. And, and they've even said they did a pretty nice job in, in that movie. And that's, for me, the, the quality of a war movie is... If people that were there or had experience with that can watch it, not just be like, oh, my God. 
you know, yeah, then Black it's, Hawk Down is a movie that I watched like in high school when it came out, and it didn't really resonate with me a whole lot. And then I watched it a few years, like kind of recently, last year or two. And uh, given that we do our Mo- or our yeah our Moog Mile oh, special wow, yeah. events, and I had done one and been around them, and then just knowing kind of some of the backstory and understanding more, I had a whole new respect for that movie. Like it was it was cool. I was glad I went back and rewatched it. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, not to make this a long story, but like later on, years later, when I would actually be in combat, I I related to it even more because like things just don't go the way that you have them planned, right. and sometimes they go horrifically worse, and you're just left staring at this like, how did this even happen? How did we even get here? None of this was in the script, you know, or in right. the brochure, and that's what Black Hawk Down was. I mean, those guys were just going to go do a hit, and they're going to grab a guy, and like. Two helicopters? Yeah, shot it's supposed down? to be like and a like, in now, right? Third. Yeah, almost. I mean, that was not even in their contingency planning. I'm sure when they were planning like what could go wrong here, yeah. they weren't thinking two birds are going to go down, mm-hmm. nineteen rangers are going to die, and we're going to spend the whole day and night fighting block to block yeah. in the Bacar market. Like that's not what they had planned, even close. I like. I enjoyed even like Lone Survivor and American Sniper came out both pretty recently. I haven't seen either of those. I can't bring myself to do it. Mm. I just. And it's nothing against Navy SEALs or war movies, but I just... It's not Personally, cool. I like a New York accent portraying my Texans. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's the ideal situation <laughs> there. Yeah. Mark, uh, Mark Wahlberg, I'm sure, did a fine job, but like he's definitely... He's a different... Like Mark Wahlberg's a short guy. Mark Luttrell's a big guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, Mark Luttrell's kind of a true sort of Texan. And, yeah. yeah anyway. Nick's favorite war movie is Inglorious Bastards. Mm, inaccurate statement. <laughs> what about... What was, was the... Really it's about the OSS, the tank sort one? of. Sort of. Yeah, I didn't oh, see the uh, tank. Fury. Fury. That one was good. I yeah. heard that was good. I should have seen that because I was an armor officer. I mean, when I was a lieutenant, I was a tanker. So I would love, I would love to see that. I got to see Fury. That's on the list now. That's that's another Brad Pitt one. Brad Pitt does good work. I guess so, right? Okay, what's so bomber. List? What's do we have any quality questions yet or no? Yeah, Rich. Uh, one of my he's the my twentieth favorite coasty with this one. Favorite uh, horror movie. Losing numbers. Ooh, favorite horror movie. I hate horror movies. I don't I don't love horror movies anymore either. I don't know what happened to me, but I'll tell you one that I loved and is underappreciated now, like that it's had a lot of sequels, is Scream. Scream. The original Scream movie was that first scene where it's the voice on the other end of the phone. And then they sh- they show the guy in like the weird mask chasing her in the backyard, and he pulls that knife out and just they show full frontal him like just putting it in the chest. And I was like, Ooh. oh damn, that was a good ass horror movie right there. Fun scream movie fact: Chris Malloy was in Scream Two. What? what? Yeah, I, that scream guy. Two, I tell you what, you pull a camera out, and Chris Malloy will show up. That's that's <laughs> my <laughs> right now. Malloy, where are you, buddy? Are you at yeah. work or something? He, he's probably like sitting at his desk, like something's happening. I need, I need to. Or he's watching. <laughs> oh. If you can get here in the next 35 minutes, you can be on the Go Ruck show, Chris. Yeah. He's going to come busting in. Calling My him favorite out. horror movie is Titanic. later. When she pushed him off that floating door, there was room enough for him. She was being selfish. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it anymore. All right, Lee, did you answer? Text Chainsaw Massacre. Which one? Uh, the original or the one with Jessica Biel? The one with Jessica Biel just because I watched it in high school, living in Oklahoma, so right next door. And it freaked me out. Driving those back roads home, I was like, mm-mm, nope, yeah. nope. Dude, nope. I almost said that. When I lived in Texas and, and when I saw that movie in the theater, that was a good horror movie as well. Yeah. Um, quality redo of that flick. Super good, yeah. Yeah. Also, I don't really like scary movies, though. I'm kind of out of them now too. I don't know what happened to me. I, I was never into them. I, I every time I've been been taken to a scary movie, it's been I've been dragged because I don't understand the idea of going in and being scared for. So you guys don't want to go see a quiet place tonight? No, nope. quiet is that a horror movie? Oh, yeah. that's the so with John Krasinski that one looks interesting. Like, oh, that's right. I saw the preview for that yeah. one. I was watching. It's got it's got Jim from The Office. How? Right. He's actually married to Emily Blunt, the the, his the wife actress. Movie. Like, yeah, oh, man, that guy's really done well for himself. Someone's on The Office. He's the goofy guy. Anyway, yeah. all right. Uh, Got a, um, what else? Brian Singlin, hello. You messed up the codes in Clark today. This is Genesee from the oldest brewery in New York. One of our friends uh, brings us some for events here locally. It's my favorite Ooh, kind yeah. of beer, cold and free. I should have said that. My, favorite, my favorite two kinds of beer, cold and free. The next one. <laughs> the next right. one. Yeah. My, uh, my wife's uncle has this saying. He always goes, oh, man, you know what that drink tastes like? Another. 
I guess that's like a main thing. I don't know. Oh, and you got called out for not saying Green Berets was your favorite movie. What? Or with John Wayne, one? you mean? Mm-hmm. That one? That is, that's pretty good. It's, it's not my favorite movie. one. I'm trying to think if there's it's my it's my choice. If it's your favorite one movie, that's yeah. cool. Um, I haven't, you know, I haven't seen the um, Twelve Strong yet. Even I need to see that. I haven't seen that one either. Is that I'm the, little, the I'm horse a, one with Thor? The horse soldier guys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah with Thor. Yeah. <laughs> Thor. Yeah, the guy that plays Thor. And also, question for Lee: Are you still drinking that three point two Oki beer? Uh, oh, only if I'm in Oki. Yeah, Oki's yeah. got the three two law. So yeah. Kansas too. Yep. And there's one other state. It's Kansas, Oklahoma, Utah. and uh, is it? no, I think so. Is it? I think so. I could be wrong. I don't know. Or call three two I beer. For those of you who don't know what that is, there's, there's a state law that mm-hmm. the beer you drink can only be three point two percent alcohol by volume. It's, and so if you're drinking like Bud Light or Coors Light or whatever, it's a different version. The than beer what you get. that you can buy in a gas station that comes cold, it has to be three point two percent. And then you could still go Colorado. Get- Yes, it's Colorado. Colorado. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you can smoke. You can go to the head shop and smoke weed, do whatever in Colorado, but they have three two beer. Oh, yeah. but I can't Blow talk your about mind. Jesus stirring beer in Shreveport. We can talk about weed. No, and where yeah. is it? Colorado. Colorado. Well, weed's not religion. I mean, oh, yeah, probably to some people. Well, well. But. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Anything, anything else worth addressing, or should we just go back to the board? Back to the board. Back to the board. board. Right, favorite. The third one down is your favorite workout. That's kind of a broad question. Do you want to take it or not? Sure. Um, Go. I would say my favorite go-to, if I'm looking to get a little fitness in, it's like a running Cindy. So I do um, five pull-ups, 10 push-ups, 15 air squats, and then run a 400. Dude, I and like I, that one a lot. I, yeah. do, I do 10 rounds. So it takes 20, 25 minutes, depending on kind of how, how bad you're getting at it. Um, that's kind of how I looked at that, though. It was just like if I was going to have half hour at the gym, hour at the gym, and I just needed something, it's one of my go-tos. I like that one a lot. I've actually done that exact workout or something very similar to it, um, like – like playgrounds near my parents' house when I'm visiting and stuff. Mm-hmm. You find some monkey bars, find a pull-up bar somewhere, anything. That's a good one. Bomber, what do you think? That What's that thing where it counts it down? Tabata? Tabata. I like doing that. Tabata. That's my, one of my favorites with leg exercises. You do like squats, lunges, box jumps. If you can't do the box jumps, you jump up. But that one is step very up. effective on step up. Yes, on yeah. making If you can't jump up, just jump hurt. up. You'll be fine. But Tabata's good stuff. Uh, 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 that and Grease in the Groove. What's Grease in the Groove? Grease in the Groove this is, is where... This is here. Yeah. This is, so say this. you suck at push-ups like maybe Jason does. What you oh do <laughs> is you'll start on a Monday. I'm on fire today. <clears throat> you'll start on a Monday and okay. you'll see what your max rep of push-ups is. Quality push-ups. Okay. Say it's eight. So you divide that by two. So eight times a day, you're going to do four, four. push-ups for okay. that whole week. Math and then the eyes. next week, you see, or that ending next Monday, you see what your max push-ups are, which should increase. And say it's 10. Or, well, no, it would be 10. It would be, say, 15. Then you'll go, sure, okay, yeah, we're going to bump it up. Right we're going to do eight. Yeah. So you do eight a day. So each week, you just in succession add to it until you can do those push-ups all day. You actually nice. corrected your math to make the math more difficult. Well, yeah, you make it a little bit more <laughs> difficult. If it's an odd number like 15, you don't want to go like, well, I'm doing six. No, I'm bumping them up there. Like push-ups. That's pretty cool. So yeah. they, uh, we've a couple of different times I've done 100 push-ups and 100 squats a day every day for a month. Yes. Um, that's, I tell you what, that is deceptively effective because uh, it's, it's not a lot of volume of work, but you're doing a little bit of something every day. And like you really do get better at doing push-ups. Um, if you do 100 a day, and you can break it up into 20 sets of five no. or you know 10 sets of 10, blah, blah, blah. I do that with way. my pull-up bar. Is I'll start, I'll pick a number. Every time I walk under the pull-up bar, I have to do that many. And then the yeah. next week, you increase it by one until it eventually actually gets so big that you stop doing pull-ups altogether because you don't have time to crank them out yeah. anymore. Yeah. yeah, We had a pull-up bar in the entrance of the latrine when I was at West Point, and I used to do that. Every time I would, I used to, when I was struggling to stay awake and like study late at night, I would chug water. To like stay hydrated and like it would make me have to go to the bathroom a lot, which yeah. would keep me awake. Keep you moving. Yeah, I wasn't into caffeine at all then. Like I didn't drink like Mountain Dew or coffee or any of that stuff. So I would just chug, I just pound water, and I have to get up frequently to go to the bathroom. And for whatever reason, that was my plan to stay awake and, and study and stuff. And every time I went to the bathroom, I would do eight pull ups. Yeah. Or whatever. And like got to where I was doing a lot of pull ups. Yeah. Right? When I do it, I usually start at like five ish, and then I'll end up building, and I usually fall off that once I get up to like twelve ish. So my so if we're just gonna go kind of go to workout, my favorite one is I do. I was describing to you the other day. 
With a barbell. You six 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 yep. six six six. Call it, my buddy and I call it the mark of the beast. You do uh, six rounds of six different exercises, six repetitions each. So you take a barbell. You don't need a lot of weight. Like you could, if you're reasonably fit, you could go ninety five. If you're, you could, but you could go fifty five, sixty five pounds. Doesn't right. have to be a lot. And so with with one barbell, you do six deadlifts. Then you do six bent over rows. Which not super common in the CrossFit space, but that's actually a tremendous exercise for your. Brent mid-back. Parrish loves him some bent over rows. Yep. Like, so six is real. Yeah, yeah, six deadlifts, six bent over rows, six hang power cleans, six front squats, six push press, six back squats. You do six rounds of that as fast as you can, and it will just burn you down. And you're good. Like that's all you need to do that day. I like the safe. idea of having six six like, but. That scheme, I like that scheme because it's it's low enough that you can essentially hit them all unbroken, but it's like it's gonna still beat you up. It's kind of like the workout Wednesday we did today. Yeah. Also, by the way, I've done that with a sixty pound sandbag, and it's it's actually worse. A ninety five pound barbell, I think, is easier than a sixty pound sandbag doing that same workout. It's terrible. People so, underestimate the sixty pound sandbags. I think. People I get, got all that I wanted on Monday, man. That yeah, people get up. barbell weight in their head, and they go, oh, I'll go 80. I'll go 120. We, yeah. don't, even, we don't even make the 120 sandbag anymore because it was just too much. I love my sandbag. Not too much. For, we know. We know. Not too much for Biggin back there. Bomber, anything interesting coming through the yeah, interrupts? Yeah, Luke MC. What up, Luke? Not one of my favorite. I know, Randy. My favorite lawyer, maybe. No, I ain't doing 666 shit. Um... Luke says, favorite Goruck Memorial event series. Boo, man. Oh, I got a good one. Go ahead. OKC. Okay. Yeah. Uh, OKC was, was when I started here, one of my goals was I wanted OKC to be more than like just have something. So it's like I want like we have a great rocking community out there. And so we got the memorial bombing event. That's where I got my HTL. Uh, just, I mean, I love home. So it's like anything we can do to raise them up, I'm all about. Bomber, what say you? There's a lot that are very special. 9 11 is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, extortion 17. There, there's a list of them, but um, when we changed the women's event to Mama Stump mm. to remember oh, her, man. that's a big one for me because she's down home. That's good. I would, oof. I'm going to say 9 11 generally just because it's like, it's such a part of the fabric of Go Rock and it was right. part of sort of building them it was really the first one we did and it's kind of still our biggest weekend of the year probably um i tried like how to get to new york city last year for it but the hurricane evacuation screwed yeah. it up so I, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll try to make this year's but um i think 9 11 very generally because that's like i was telling you guys before that was, i was a brand new second lieutenant in the officer basic course when 9 11 happened it completely changed my life so it's really probably my favorite but the mama stump one having been fortunate enough to know stephanie and like to meet her son and to understand that story a little bit and to spend some time with, with her while she was still fighting a good fight For and, sure. and, and really fighting. She wasn't just like, Oh yeah. You know, hanging in there. She was oh, still yeah. very she vigorous. Still like, getting up after her. That's, um, that's pretty special. I'm glad that we, that we do that. Anything else? Uh, Adam asked, he's one of my third, he's third or fourth favorite Canadian, uh, our favorite food. Ooh, that's golly. on the list already. That's uh there, it was on the list. That's a new one. It wasn't on the list. No, no, no. Favorite food. That's a tough one. Man. Uh, I usually just kind of say steak. I like I like steak a lot in kind of all of its forms. So I guess I'd have to go with that. But if I, but I don't eat steak out very much. Because mm-hmm. I've no. gotten to the point where like I can I can make a steak at the house, whether it's like cast iron skillet or on the grill. Like I I like the steak that I make at the house. And so I have a hard time ordering one out a lot of times. So if we're out and I've got a and I want to go somewhere and have like my favorite food, maybe it would be God, I don't know, man. Sushi, probably. Sushi. Sushi is good one. Crush sushi. Because no one ever makes sushi at home. Exactly. I'm not making sushi at home. Ever. Like maybe one time. Oh, I saw this on Pinterest. Okay, we'll try it. Somebody once bought me like sushi rolling mats and all that stuff. I'm like, oh, this will be so fun. We'll do this. Never did it. No. Never did it. But I love eating some sushi out. Mexican food is mine. Uh, here it's like tacos. It's like Mexican food back home and here is different. Back there it's like yeah. fajitas. You get the fajitas, you get the beans, you get the rice. Here it's like two, three, four like tacos. Street tacos. Yeah. Yeah. That tacos and margs, favorite meal of the week. 
Bomber, do you remember the, the Mexican food that we had in El Paso on our way up to White Sands? I now it set, it set us ablaze <laughs> over three days. I don't want to remember that. <laughs> the horrible. green chilies in New Mexico are for real. They're, they're, they're not play. kidding about that shit. They will tear you up if you underestimate it. They don't play. Um, my favorite food, very specifically, is a very nice, thick T-bone steak. Very rare. With steamed broccoli. And there's this German wine with a monkey on the bottle. It's painted gold. I call it monkey wine. It's a red wine. <laughs> That's not the name of the pages. wine, though, I assume. I can't remember it. I just, I just go into, I can go into World Market. Y'all get this. It's real good shit. I can go, I want the monkey wine, and then I go pick it up. Boom. So, I'm going to offer a recommendation to you. You can take it or leave it. Yeah. If you like steamed broccoli, you should try roasting broccoli. Oh. So, take the broccoli, cut it up, I put like it on this. a put it on a baking sheet, yes. mm -hmm. drizzle it with olive oil, salt and pepper, put it in the oven on 400 for 20 minutes. And like when you pull it out, it should be just a little bit caramelized. So it should be a little brown or even like black in some spots, you know, when you pull it out. That will completely change your world as it pertains to broccoli. I'm at, we actually, uh, Penny and I, because, because Jenny is out of town for work, Penny and I have been going it alone for the last couple of weeks. We had roasted broccoli last night. She had more of it than I, I couldn't even imagine. And so we're having it again tonight. I'm, I'm roasted broccoli. Over. You're welcome, all of you out there. Martha yeah. Stewart will be on next week's Go Ruck Show. Brussels sprouts. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, 420 minutes, olive oil, salt, and pepper. Nice. The way to do it. You know what you can do? We do uh, carrots that way now. Mm -hmm. All kinds of stuff. Roast your vegetables, people. We're getting some cool ones in. All right, send them. Go. Them. Shannon Schneider, he's a new GRT. Never heard of him. <laughs> okay, if, see. If you only had Uncle. one ruck, which one would you pick? Each of you pick? GR1. GR1. Easy, yeah, it's GR1. Yeah. Hands down. Like 20, not even I, I would go 26 liter GR1 to be more specific. Yeah, if you only, like, I only at, have the 26 liter, so, but that thing, I mean, it's treated me well for seven-ish years, eight-ish, almost eight years now, like, it's been great. Yeah, so I Don, go, my, go my everyday carry is a 21 liter GR1, uh, but I have a, I have the 25 liter Rucker, the first run of the Rucker, so, right. like, I use, if I need to go on a, something. a trip or something like that, I've got the, the, the volume in that Ruck. I actually did baton with the 25 liter rucker though, because I like the way the, the hip pad kind of fit yeah. all, actually on my hips and not it wasn't too high like on my rib cage. But um, if I could only have one, I would go 26 liter GR1. Easy. Dom Santillary, I'll Wait, answer what was your this. Answer? I just said GR1? GR1? Yeah. 26 liter? Color 26 preference? 26 liter black. Yeah, no, I if I could only have one, I'd go black 26 yeah, liter I would go GR1. To black. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Dom says favorite non uh, ruck piece of go ruck gear. Non ruck. Oh, Mine so is Budweiser. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What have y'all got? God, there's so there are a few. I would probably go simple pants. Ooh, I didn't think apparel. Uh, simple shorts. Yeah, would be up there. As far as like, if you're talking our, our gear, non apparel, I would say I get a lot of use out of my kit bags. Thirty two liter kit bag. Thirty two liter, yeah. uh, and even we call it some. It's not the mill and civvy anymore. It's just. Yeah, it's, it's, 57 liter, right? Uh, 57 or yeah, so that's yeah. what it's on is on the website. Yeah, so the but, 57, so, the one in the middle. Yeah, the middle one. Yeah. Um, that's kind of if I if I'm gonna travel and I don't need a specific ruck, I go GR1 and kit bag usually. And I try then, to always go one if I have to, if I can. Yeah. But like we did, when we did the baton, we were out there for too long. We had too yeah, much stuff. Too we had much like stuff. camping stuff. So I went ruck. And uh, 32 liter kit bag. Yeah. You don't want to go two rucks. I did that for the Grand Canyon thing, so I had to bring a bunch of extra camping gear. Right. And I, I didn't have a, a 32 liter kit bag actually at the time, so I, I, do, I went double ruck. And you're in the airport, you got. It's not a good look. But ruck It's and a kit weird bag is, look. I've seen it a few times, and it, there's worse options out there. You could have anything with wheels on and you yeah, roll. Yeah, any rollerboard like is an worse. Idiot. For the record, but. Yeah. What else? Sandbags, Jake too, though. Galvin, favorite cities to ruck in. Ooh. That was actually kind of on our on our board already. Favorite city to ruck in. I would DC's got to be way up there. It, I like DC because it's got it's it's got the big city energy, but it's got like all the buildings have to be below eleven stories, so you can like you can see. There's like the National Mall, like I don't know. <coughs> DC, you can you can get out and ruck in that city and not feel like you're just gonna get mobbed by traffic. Like other big cities, New York, Chicago, Seattle. It's it's a little difficult. You're like on the sidewalk, you know, it's it's tough. But DC's got the, it's got the energy and it's got the actual space to do it. Potomac River, Georgetown, 
Old Town Alexandria, super cool. DC. I realize Alexandria is not DC. Bill Roush, if you're watching. Well, I've never been to DC. What? Are you should me? I'll be at the 50 miler. You've never been to DC? I will be at the Marine Corps Monument the, capital the freedom? whole time. <laughs> you're going to be at Iwo Jima the whole time? Yeah. <laughs> if, anyone Look, needs if you've you, never been to DC, be. like, First of all, first of all, that memorial is not in D.C., so I hate to break your heart. It's that's in Alexandria. In, it's in it's in Arlington. I just guess. Is that on the list? It's in Virginia. I don't know if it is or not. You're not doing so, it. So it's below Mason-Dixon line. Yeah, so if you're, if you're there the whole time, you're not going to actually see D.C. If, dude, if this is it really your first time? <coughs> Never I mean, been. I've been all around the area. I've been to New England, which is an area, not a state. That's I've been true. in New York. I've been to Philly. All around, but not DC. Dude, I'm excited for you to go. I'm a man too. It's, DC. it's a great DC solid. It's a yes, good time of year to exactly. be there too. May 18th, 19th. That's going to be a good time of year to be there. It'll be warm. It'll be yeah. nice. Springtime, but it won't be blazing ass hot like July. It'll be primo. Perfect weather for rucking 50 miles. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, favorite city to rucking? Um, I really, I would say it's less of a city, more just a new city. I enjoy getting out there, whether um rucking or just trying to get some miles in or whatever and just almost getting lost in a new spot and checking it out um yeah. so you know your favorite city to ruck in is probably whatever city you're in if you're asking right like no, um, no, I see what you're doing but so but my favorite one would be i mean uh, dublin was really cool when i was there um i got a couple miles up in charlotte last time i was up up there which was nice jack's beach endless beach miles people vacation to come do that so yeah. Um, I think that's a hard, that's a hard one. I think for me, rucking is always more about the people and, and the community and, and the fun side of it. Um, but I, I also enjoy just getting lost in a city, if you will. Yeah, I get it. That's one nice thing about rucking that's maybe a little different than running too, is like when you're going at sort of a rucking pace, yeah. you're not really in danger of just like wrecking yourself and getting no. lost and being like, shit, yeah. I have to run back. Like you got some, you can put supplies in your ruck if you need mm -hmm. to, like it's, we did uh, the old city in San Juan, Puerto Rico, yeah, not long ago. That is such a cool place, man. If you've not been to Puerto Rico in general, but San Juan specifically, the old city there is so cool. It's like, it's kind of like a more laid back version of San Francisco, if that makes any sense. Like it's hilly, narrow streets, got huge like sweeping views of the bay. Yeah, it's got the forts. Like it's it's super hilly to be right on the coast. It's really really hilly. We it's were awesome. we were in Puerto Rico about a month apart from each other, and I, that's what I was surprised about is how hilly it was. And it seemed like no matter where you were, you could always see the ocean or the bay, or you could see the water because it, it it's very much it's like Puerto Rico is like the tip of a mountain that just peaks out of the water, right? So funny how that works, right? Yeah, science, <laughs> geology, geology? <laughs> <laughs> bomber. Robert, I don't know if it's childress or childress. What's your favorite city to ruck in? Oh, favorite city oh. to ruck in? I'll tell you right now. Okay. Favorite dinosaur. I went to high school with him. Did you? Yeah. Well, we're going to hit his question up next. <laughs> um, of course, Shreveport, back where I'm from. But Not Bossier City. Well, we always park at Bossier. We walk across the bridge, the Texas Street Bridge. It's a quarter mile one way. No, a half mile. That's a short So you that's put a, a short mile rock. in there. So you go over there. <laughs> you go all up down the parkway. Maybe have some beers. Come back. It's a good time. San Antonio, I had a really good ruck in one time. We we end up with beers. And I've never been to night. San Antonio. I guarantee there was Lone Star beer involved. Oh, yeah. Jason, buying them 10 at a time. It's a great story. Five pack, five k. My official answer, because we've, Nick and I have been to Detroit, Cleveland, all through Florida, and I've rucked with a ton of GRTs all through Texas, but it's any place where there's cool people. Very, so that would not very mean, diplomatic answers. You that two. would mean right. not so, Palm Beach. <laughs> oh wow! Dagger, dagger. All right, what's I don't next? Know, Tampa is pretty bad with their one up in this. Oh field. my god, they have to stop that shit. Uh, favorite dinosaur? Ooh, man. As the father of two boys with extensive experience with uh, dinosaur books, yeah, it's hard to pick though. Elasmosaurus. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, well, you don't have to. I'm on Google it. You're, what is it? How do you, wait, hold on. How do you spell that? Don't know. Well, that I don't know. <laughs> A-S-T-H-A-M-A-S-O-R-E-S-U-S-E. Asmasaurus. Yeah. Um, what's yours? Stegosaurus. Why? Really? 
More than sometimes my back and knees hurt so bad I gotta <laughs> crawl on all fours. You know how that stegosaurus has that gait? <laughs> That's me trying to get in a cold bath. T Rex. Easy, right? Like <laughs> Jim. So Jones. okay, so I'll offer you one. There's the Allosaurus, which is sort of like the T Rex, but I think in my opinion a more badass version of it. So Allosaurus <laughs> would be one too. Okay, so you have two. Anyway. Cool, got it. So got two. Dylan, that was for you, buddy. Okay, there's a new one. Wicked Pumpkin says feelings <laughs> on boonie hats. She just bought a boonie hat. Bon, and she is bon, a pug. boonie hat. It's not Bonnie. It's What's boonie. a boonie hat? Boonie hat. I, you know that really I weird, believe, like, full brim. I believe only hat? infantry oh. folks should wear boonie hats. What about Scott Snipers? Like, like all the way around, like Richard okay. Dreyfus types yes. shit, right? Like, yes. mis- like uh, what was I'll that? I'll wear my original. What was that like, movie? Like Mark Mark Wahlberg in um uh, yeah. Survivor. Yep, that's a boonie yeah. hat. Okay, uh, feelings on them. Hey. If you can rock it, go for it. I'm a big fan. I wore one for a long time. I have one. Iraq, circa 2004, almost every damn day. Kyle Crinier? Crinier? Best post event activity? Is that before or after? It depends on the post event. Is post event after. is after. Is after? Pre is before, I'm pretty sure. Well, beer, doesn't it? Smashing on food with, with beer. Like, no, no guilt, whatever meal <clears throat> it is after you're tough. Yeah, after a tough, it's got to be like breakfast brunch like just crushing a huge breakfast i, I pose tavern is, has become my uh my go-to spot after a top the room morgue it's just like bed of fries oh, burger patty bur- yeah there's chili, no bun right no bun it's just a bed of french Egg. fries a half pound burger yeah chili queso i think case liquid cheese and yeah and a fried egg i actually had that the last time i was there pro move add jalapenos yep god that's exactly what i had the last time i was there it's almost too much Oh, it's definitely I, too much. That's why I only like have it after afterwards. a tough. Yeah, because you're Only just like, after a tough. Like, you don't just go to dinner and have that. That's really? four days of cal- <laughs> calories. Nick, Nick your, your opinion's irrelevant on this because you're just... You don't eat like a normal human being. You should have seen what he had at the IHOP. No, I, not Denny's. You should have seen what he had at Denny's what for get, breakfast. Two in Grand Slams or whatever? No, it was some ridiculous, like, pecan maple <clears> with <throat> birthday cake icing pancake thing. You should have seen the disguise. There's a coffee he ordered... Starbucks. Oh shit. Yeah, their unicorn poop frappe, right? Yeah, yeah. Or no, what it's called? Unicorn one. It was the uh, crystal ball or some shit crystal. like that. I don't, I don't know. On purpose? I don't know. Yeah, because Goad kept egging me on all weekend to get it. So I was like, fuck it, man, I'll get it. Was it was delicious. It was not delicious. I gave him like my disappointed dad face when he showed back up with that thing. I was like, <laughs> hey guys, here's my pink and blue drink. Gentle shades oh, of pink and blue. It was supposed goodness. to have three extra shots of espresso in it, and Goad screwed up the order, so I, it's just like the normal you just, one. You just got the sugar <laughs> yeah. without, without the caffeine. Like, this is not right. <laughs> 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 oh, this is going <laughs> great because I have totally lost Starbucks with a side of diabetes. What, um, um, what do you got? Hunter Collins, will there ever be another Bomber Bash event? Yes, and Jason McCarthy will be there. Um, <laughs> Shannon, you've run it for everything with that one. Or Clint Eastwood. Richard Dreyfuss or Clint Eastwood? That's God, man. All right, You're showing your age, Back on what we got next on our list. Back yeah, oh, favorite Step book. it up. Book is next after workout. Favorite book? Born to Run. Ooh, that is a good one. It, it's not necessarily like my favorite book, um, but it's probably the book that I've taken the most information from and applied it to all aspects of training and working out and yada, 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 yada. Yeah, that's, so, that is a good one. That's a really it's good. interesting too, right? It's just interesting Super book. interesting. Yeah. Um, humans are one of the only animals that can cool themselves while moving. What? Yeah. It's called sweating. Yeah, I know. But it's like dogs, horses can't do it. Like, yeah. Bomber, favorite book? Um, Guadalcanal Diaries is on up there. But anything to do with history. Big history buff? Yes. I've said it before. I think my favorite book is The Alchemist. Mm-hmm. It kind of depends on what you're looking for and what you're trying to learn or whatever. Favorite fiction book? Well, the Alchemist is yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm so, so favorite nonfiction for you. Favorite? What would your favorite fiction book be? Oh, fiction! I'll tell you right now. I like. I'm stoked to see the movie, but Ready Player One was really good. Yeah, not so, a still favorite, read that. It's been recommended it's a lot. French, I got to read that yeah. one. Book totally worth reading. Movie worth seeing. Very yeah. like good on both ends. Um, I'm trying to think what my like. When was the last time I read a fiction book? The oh. Giver is good, by the way. If you guys liked Ready Player One, I think you would like The Giver. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Yeah. The Martian was good. That was a super easy read. I picked it up coming back from a Kill That 5K in the airport. Is that the one where um, Matt, Matt Damon, Damon in the movie? Matt yeah, Damon goes to that. Mars and gets stuck. 
And he's like farming potatoes or something like that. Yeah, I'm gonna science shit out of this. Man, not favorite nonfiction book. Ooh, man. I'll tell you what, the book that I read that like shifted my thinking the most and got me involved in like reading a lot of other nonfiction books was the first Freakonomics book. Economics. Yeah, like circa nineteen ninety four or five, whenever that came out. I'm plugging through the new. I think it's the newest Tim Ferriss. It's Tribe of Mentors. It's kind of interesting. He picks mm-hmm. like a hundred people, asks some more or less the same ten ish questions. Yeah. And it's just kind of interesting to see what these people all think about him. Yeah, yeah. I've read the Four Hour Workweek. I haven't read any of his other books. His book. He writes books in a weird style. I mean, he says in the intro, he says this book isn't meant to be read front to back. It's Look at the chapters. If there's something in there that's interesting to you, go read that chapter then, and then you know come back occasionally. Like that's been all his books that I've read so far. Um, mm-hmm. he's, yeah, well, he's kind of an aggregator. That's kind of his jam. Like, yeah. not to like take anything away from because he's wildly successful and is crushing mm-hmm. it and all that. But like, he's and I'm sure he's got a lot of original thought and, and he's done a lot of like study and experimentation and stuff. <clears> but my my take on it is he's a he's a good aggregator. Yeah, like I learn a lot from the guests on his podcast and like in his books. He's sort of like. He's good at like testing things out, vetting them, then like recommending them to other people. Yeah, type, type stuff. Kit's a big believer in like he's a big Tim Ferriss fan also. Yeah, I um I tell you one thing I I found about Tim Ferriss for me personally is that I have to sort of throttle back a little bit every now and then because I I've got myself in spaces before where it's like oh four hour work week and you can optimize this and do that and it's kind of like, at some point you have to sort of deal with reality and say, no, I have three kids and I have to go to work every day. And no, Tim. I do have to mow my lawn and, you know, you can outsource and optimize and do all these things. Everything. But like, I'm, I'm not looking really to like optimize my morning routine, my sleep, my, you know, I'm not trying to be in ketosis every day. Like no. that's, that's just not what I want for me in, in my life. And I don't think I'm in denial for saying that. Like I don't, I just don't want all, all of that. What I would find to be like the complication on the road to, I guess, what he would probably call simplicity. Yeah. Like, I would just rather be more simple-minded and say, like, oh, I just want to try to sleep well, eat well, work out regularly, be nice to my kids, kiss my wife. Like, that works for me better than all of the super optimizations. I, I think that the way he would probably look at it, though, is like, cool, then skip those chapters. If there's chapters that pertain to you, then read those. Well, sure. Well, having said all that, I've listened to a ton of his podcasts. Right, yeah. I read one of his books. Like, I've gotten, I've read his blog. I've gotten a lot from... He's given me more than I've exchanged with him in monetary value because I think I've bought one of his books and that's probably it. Yeah. Um, so the, the guy's awesome. I just I have to just be careful about getting into the um, self help sort of the, the cheesy way to say it, but like right. you can almost become a bit of a self help junkie to where and like this where is, everything in your life is has something to do with that. Yeah, and like and here's the thing like. You, for one, you should take some time to just kind of enjoy your life and appreciate the things you have without worrying about if they're the optimal or you could make them better, I, I think. Yeah. But the other thing is if, if you get too absorbed in self-help, and, I, and I've seen this even in my own life, if you get thinking too much about self-help and optimization and performance and all that, you're, you're focused too much on yourself. Mm-hmm. And like the, one of the leading indicators of people who are uh, depressed is an intense focus on the self. And one of the best ways to sort of shake a lot of your anxiety and depression is to focus less on yourself and to focus more on your environment or other people in your life or projects and things you're working on. So like self-improvement, self-work, self-help, super important. All like all the most successful people have some level of introspection and are willing to do that. But if you spend too, too much time on it, like then you're just spending your whole life thinking about you. And that's yeah. not a good recipe for being happy, I don't think. Everything in moderation, including moderation. Yeah, and everything in moderation, including excess. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> All right. Back to the list. Let's Our go. list or your list? This Back list. This is band. Next, after a favorite book, is favorite band. This is a tough one. It Foo is Fighters. a tough one. Boom. Took mine. <laughs> Two out of the three of us, Foo Fighters, really? Uh, Foo, like, rock band, band I've probably spent the most time listening to, Foo Fighters, are at least in the top handful on that list. Um, I'm a really big Jay Z fan. Like, I get that. I I was a big fan, and then I saw him in concert. So a friend of mine back home hit me up like an hour before the concert, and she said, "Hey, do you want to go to the Jay Z concert? My date just flaked on me." I was like, "Hell yes!" Second place is a nice place to be sometimes, friends. Yeah, and uh, 
She, she's still with that guy today, by the way. They live together and everything. Kylie. No funny and, business at the concert. Yeah. It was all. No, time. it was all straight up. I bought her. I bought her a, a bunch of beers that night. Like, and she bought. Beers. She bought my Jay Z ticket. Like, <laughs> it worked out. Um, but no, he blew me away with his live show because it was him and like four or five other dudes on stage the whole time. There, there weren't forty people. There weren't a thousand outfit changes. It was. It was just music. The music. Was sort of the focus. Yeah. And, and like he crushed it. He, the the energy was high. He 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 ran the crowd right. It was it was awesome. It was one of my favorite concerts I've ever been to. So I would say those would be my top two: Foo Fighters and and Jay Z. I like Foo Fighters because, and I'm I'm not a big fan of like pointing fingers and saying the bands sell out or whatever. Like I don't I don't like when people do that. But one of the things I I like to talk out of the other side of my mouth. One one of the things I like about Foo Fighters is I think that they have never sold out in any sense of the word like as a, a lot of rock bands tend to go more poppy as they get more popular yeah um which i guess sort of makes sense right popular music foo fighters i feel like some of their more recent stuff like in terms of being like hard rock and roll like they're they're as rock and roll as they ever were in the early days maybe maybe even more so and i've appreciated that from foo fighters that like we're a rock band we're gonna play rock and roll and they've stuck to that for like 20 years and, and, it's, and they it's awesome. consistently put out like every album is consistently good. They haven't just fallen off. They haven't sold out, like you said. They're good live, which is another. Huge I haven't seen them live. Thing. They're coming here yeah. at the end of the Same, month. Yeah. I'm gonna if if I'm not at that show, they're playing in West Palm in Atlanta. I one of those three shows happen. Okay. Next question is favorite live show you've ever seen. But Bomber, we gotta get favorite band first. Um, I'm going to see both Cephas this Friday. Want That's to shout Hank out Williams to Hank Jr. Jr. For those of you less yes. informed, yeah. But Weezer is my favorite. Just been a oh, long time dude, fan with Weezer. Love Weezer. Most underrated live, band of the yeah. 90s, and it's not close. Yeah. The, they're and they're super, still super killing underrated. it live. And they have yeah. new music still coming out, by the way, 2018. Yeah. Their last album was awesome. Yeah. My yeah. second one is the Toadies. Ooh, also underrated. Yeah. A little niche. Yeah. They're, the Toadies were a little bit like the Strokes, where they were kind of big, but they never got too big. It worked out well for them. Both of them live, they kill it. That's Toadies. Good. I remember right. playing Toadies on Rock Band. Mm-hmm. Okay, so favorite live show... It doesn't have to be your favorite band because the experience of a live show matters a lot. Like how much you had to drink, who you were there with, what time of year it was, all that stuff. Favorite live show? Pearl Jam in Pensacola. Ooh, I saw Pearl, Pearl Jam, Jam once. Pensacola. They were really good. What year? I don't even remember. <laughs> you were that drunk. Don't you don't even my, remember? Don't tell my mom. <laughs> it was in the 90s. Pearl, okay, yeah. Well, Pearl Jam Pearl 90s Jam was, drunk, was legit. What do you think? Um, Green Day... Jimmy Eat World Open Forum. Uh, they were touring their American Idiot album. And, wow. So and that was when Green Day was legit. American Idiot. That was like American Idiot was the was first the album. album? That, no, 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 no. Was, Dookie was their first, their first big one. Second right? one. Dookie was their first big one, I believe. Yeah. I think they had one before that, and then it was. I think they had one that was kind of meh, and then it was American Idiot. But American mm-hmm. Idiot was the one where everyone's like, "Oh, they sold out," and it's like, "No, they just kind of elevated their game to a whole different oh. thing." Is that you? Yeah, it's me. Holy shit, That Bomber. can't be. Bomber, you thought that was a good look? That's me. Is that, that a fur jacket? jacket? Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I wish you guys could see what we're looking at. Oh, my God. Oh. Um, so, Green Day Jimmy World is probably my favorite show. We were on the floor, mosh pit and stuff. I was in high school, college? I think I was in college. Wow. Blink-182 in high school at the Oklahoma State Fair, though, was pretty cool, too. I was... 10th grade had no a business punk, a lot of punk for you i was like or a punk-ish, ska, right? punk-ish ska, ska punk right like that, that's depends kinda... on how hardcore of a punk fan you are some people would get upset if you said that green day or blink 182 was punk but get over yourself it's fine yeah cbgb blah 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 brooklyn punk is dead okay. so I need more I've, I've been to a, <laughs> a like approximately a jillion live shows so give or take when i lived in texas man that was our favorite thing every single weekend sometimes during the week we would go to a live show where'd you live in texas fort hood so we were, you know, Beautiful 50 miles right? north of Austin. So okay. a lot of time in Austin. Texas music is, that's what got me really into like really loving music. I started learning to play the guitar. Like Texas music turned the corner for me in terms of just really appreciating songwriting and music. Robert and Earl Keane. Robert Earl Keane. Yeah, all that. Uh, Cross Canadian Ragweed, a lot of the Red Dirt yeah. music. 
That's we've people. all we've all seen Cross Canadian. Right? Yeah. Have you seen Cross Canadian? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple of so times. We, look at They'd that. play in Ruston at Louisiana Tech a lot. I used to walk into bars in OKC, and like one or two of the members of the band would be doing just like one or two like you know people yeah. shows, like acoustic shows. Me and my buddy Jimmy Campbell went and saw one time at the at the University of Texas Student Union. We went and saw Cody Canada, Mike McClure, and Jason Bolin play a live acoustic set. We drove down after work. It was like on a Wednesday. <laughs> Like we had like Taco Bell after work and drove down to bomb it as fast as we could down to Austin to catch that. So I mean I've seen a lot of shows that have made a big mark on me. We went to the Willie Nelson Fourth of July picnic one year, which is an epic adventure. We um we went the previous year went to they called it Willie's Day Off. It was on the Fourth of July and, and he for whatever reason couldn't do it that year. So they threw a big thing in Waterloo Park in Austin with like Pat Green and Ragweed and Corey Morrow. Um, my parents came to that one, which was amazing. <laughs> there was like shirtless people, including women. It was hot, like beer. Every, it was awesome. Um, but, but musically, like I was, I was never been more blown away. Damien Rice at the Tampa Theater. That venue is amazing. Most people don't even know about the Tampa Theater. It's, it's kind of like the Florida Theater here in Jacks, but like even more sort of amazing. Small venue, steep stadium seating. It's, it's hard to describe. Really amazing venue. And Damien Rice went up there by himself with a guitar and, a, and he had a loop pedal, you know, so he had like yeah. a distortion and loop and he just started laying down just like a wall of music. And every tune he played would sort of build and it was just like this huge crescendo. If you guys don't know Damien Rice, like if you just look up some of his like uh, studio stuff, you it's good, but you might be a little underwhelmed. But that live show, he, he doesn't, he rarely tours. He goes like nine years between albums. He's just sort of one of those dudes. Unbelievable show. Jenny and I were sitting there next to each other and we we're just like. Killing it. Yeah, we were, I had to be, it was actually around Veterans Day one year. So I was, I had to be in DC for a bunch of different stuff. And I was there, or New York actually. I was in New York for like a week. Had to be in DC the next day. We f flew home, got there in the afternoon, caught the concert that night, flew back out at 6 a.m. the next day to go back up. To DC for work stuff, but I came home just to see it. It nice. was awesome. Epic. We got a few more minutes. What's up? Hit that. Hit Back that to the board. We got cool. time for one more. Oh, okay. Pick your, pick your favorite of the remaining lists. We got to Let's we gotta go. <laughs> no. Right there in front of you. Have fun. No. View when you grow up. Shoe. Uh, favorite, no, favorite, hell favorite, favorite to the no on that. Video it's the game. classy version of Fireball, though. Dude, I don't care. Fireball it's, rules it's a lives. Rip, it's a rip. Yeah. Fireballs. It's the proof. fuel of bad decisions. This is favorite Jack holiday. Lee's life. Holiday school. Favorite holiday. Or or who was your high school crush? <coughs> Let's do them both. All right, very quickly then. Favorite holiday. Favorite holiday. Yeah. Uh, not my birthday. I don't like. I don't like that. Cool. So okay. I, like, I can make not myself. Anymore, anyway, huh? I can make fun of. My, I or make myself uh, the center of attention. But when other people like cast it on me. I don't like it at all. It's like that rule from Wedding Crashers. Never soak in the corner. Call, I don't. Call yeah. attention to yourself. But, but good on attention. Your own terms. Yeah, on your own terms. That's the, uh, um, don't like my birthday. I, I know what you mean by that. Like, yeah. I get that. When people come yeah. out saying happy birthday to you, it's like, it's one of the circles of hell. Oh, yeah. It's um, favorite holiday? It's changed since I, probably Thanksgiving. Oh, Thanksgiving, easy. No but brainer Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Oh, dude. Fourth of July like Fourth of July here is really special though. But Thanksgiving I I literally won't go home for Thanksgiving because we have too much fun out here. Yeah, so Thanksgiving here at the unless beaches it rains. is amazing. Yeah, unless it pours rain. It rain this My year. poor parents, man, they came up for Thanksgiving and I'm promising them this amazing experience. We're going to go to Pete's Bar at like 9 a.m. Hey, so we, we work on Thanksgiving here at Go Rock, by the way, because it's like Black Friday and everything. So like I got to go to work for a few hours, but then we're going to come home. We're going to go to Pete's. We're going to drink beer. It's like a mob scene in the streets, and we're going to have a big meal and just poured rain. We missed most of the festivities, but that holiday is the best because there's the expectations are so manageable right like it's not about gifts it's no. not about there's yeah. no there's for me there's no stress there's no pressure it doesn't have to like the kids and opening presents and all that it's just we're gonna get people together give thanks be with friends and family we've done a big friends giving a lot of years where we just invite all the strays and like what's come on what's better than that's that? what i like about that about it out here is because we're all orphans out here more or less where it's like very few like locals. really only jason and emily are from the beaches out the rest of us yeah are like joey beaches. block parties from around here and then yeah. there's like a couple uh new guy nate is from here even though he moved here from chicago so mm -hmm. there, there's a little bit of family stuff but yeah it's a lot of orphans so we all get to hang out and uh 
that yeah, that's probably my favorite holiday out here is Thanksgiving. It's just and I think my favorite part about it though is that we just unplug. It's it's like a built in look, you're gonna just rest today because everything's closed. You're gonna eat some fatty food and you're gonna probably take a few naps. Except for Go Ruck. Go Ruck is not closed. And we're definitely not closed the next day on Black Friday. No, we're definitely not closed the next day. But still, there's but a little thank bit of that. You for vibe. shopping on Black Friday yeah. it really helps keep the lights on around here. So thank you. No, I'm not complaining in any in any way, shape, or form. Uh, oh, so the last one Fireball was... Fireball is garbage. Uh, high School Crush. High School Crush. Who was physically demanding event completed. That's a good one, Jim. Uh, high School Crush. <sighs> I think Shania Twain. Man. I'm dating myself a Feel bit. No, we're talking like 96. I'm gonna kill that date. 96, 97, Shania Twain. She could sing. She's super hot. She was Canadian. I don't know if that had anything to do with it. There were two. There were two Shania Twains? No, two that I have. Oh, it's okay, go ahead. Madonna? Wow. Don't judge me. Really, wow. David? Yeah. Just... Hey, who, was who, look, who was sexier to like a, a teenage boy than Madonna in her heyday? Oh yeah. Because she wasn't just that like was attractive; the, yeah. she was provocative. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like you're raging teenage hormones. Yeah. You see some stuff. They're pinging. Like, well, All the lights and bells are going off. The other one was uh, Heather Locklear. Heather Locklear. Wow. Yeah. Heather Locklear. I had a poster. Locklear. I had a poster of her on the back of my door to my bedroom because I didn't want my mama seeing that when she came under to make my bed. Your mom made your bed. Nice. I know she wouldn't let me because she uh, said I did it shitty. What? And then when I come back from the Marine Corps, I'm like, Mama, I'm a bed making master now. Don't what, you worry. What's girl. Heather Locklear look like nowadays? She's, she's been kind of still hot. She's probably she's still, still hot. hot. You remember, remember when she was dating David hot. Spade? David Spade used to date a lot of super hot LA women. I don't know how he managed to pull that off. It was always such a mesmerizing thing. Is that me. Joe Dirt? Joe yeah. Dirt. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Saturday Night Live. Dear Tay. Joe Deer Day. Um, Heather Lott, when she was on, was it Spin City with Michael J. Fox? I remember her being really, really Oh, hot good on lord. That. All right. high, school, high school crush? Uh, Mariah Carey. We Mar- so let me ask you a question. Pre Diddy Mariah Carey or post Diddy Mariah Pre, Carey? Pre, like back, like Butterfly album? I, dude, I totally agree. I thought Mariah Carey was so hot. Um, I loved her so much in her sort of earlier days when she went sort of the uh, honey. Yeah, did he route? I didn't no, like it as much anymore. Don't get me wrong. No, I mean, and like, it's not a judgment. I just, uh, I just. Mariah Carey is definitely part. insane. She's definitely crazy, especially now. <laughs> <laughs> definitely a crazy person, but. But back before fame got to her, oh, sorry, we're just we're casting judgment. Andrew point. Handley. Wow, just don't so bring Handley. that anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Handley said, "What's up?" Pamela Andrew Anderson, Andrew. Carmen Electra were both up there too, though. That was kind of when I... In a Madonna kind of way. Oh, yeah. To the teenage... Yeah. Baywatch? Yeah. What's up? All right, we should wrap it up before we get in trouble. Yeah. That... All right. Y'all, this has been note. fun. I'll we'll probably note. never do this again, so I hope you enjoyed yeah. it. All right, see you next time. Later. We had Bye. Two, three beers left. <laughs>